Good, good, good. Oh, and I've got coffee left. We're on, by the way. We're on. Butch, pleasure to make a hand. Nice to meet you, my friend. Um, is Butch your actual name? No, so let's, ex- <laughs> let's explain that one. Every- <laughs> no, no, it's a good one. So my background, French-Canadian, right? So born speaking French in the, in the uh, French-Canadian province of Quebec. And my last name is Bouchard. B-O-U-C-H, right? Bouch- and A-R-D, Bouchard. A, f- a, you know, a French Canadian that his last name is Bouchard Boucher. Anything Bouch. The nickname in French is Butch, but B O B O U C H. Mm. But when you, you know, I joined the military and the unit I was in is the rest of Canada is English. We need to speak English. So, so when, when you introduce yourself, Butch, the French Canadian way to, to an Englishman, you'll write it like Butch, B U T C H. You don't care, and it just became. There, there's guys that I worked with for two decades that don't know my name. They call me Butch. Yeah, right? that's, that's, a, like, that's a military thing, that. Yeah, isn't it, it is. It is. Same with same with us. There was a what's guy. You, what's your nickname? I didn't have one. <laughs> really? Yeah, I did when I was in school. Yeah, because yeah. kids are horrible. Mm-hmm. I had Jass or Janus. Yeah, so huge ass. Yeah, huge Janus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So mine is Butch. <laughs> that's it. And then but in the military now, it's, yeah. it's so just. Oh, I, I, I tell I you what, I, I tell a lie. I tell a lie. So when I was growing up, my my, my dad called me Shug. Uh-huh. S-H-U-G and that's, that's Scottish cool. slang for Hugh right that's cool but that was the closest thing I got to a nickname when I was serving is the cup the very few people who I came in contact mm-hmm. the, who who knew about Shug being a Hugh nickname they would call me which yeah. obviously there was maybe two or three in, in my entire career would call mm-hmm. me Shug everyone else called me Hugh or Kia but Hugh normally yeah. I use it as not a weapon but I use it as a tool now because oh wow that's nice um, was that thunder? yeah I think so supposed to have a yeah thunder shower um i use it as a tool because in my my brotherhood butch and then i started using it as a tool when i meet someone and i know he's not gonna ever be in my circle (laughs) you see where i'm going my name's sebastian (laughs) my name is sebastian so i introduce myself as sebastian because as the what my name Sebastian. Oh, Sebastian. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so he calls me Sebastian, and then if you, you call me Butch because we're close. We're close. We're friends. If I, if, if, if somebody, two years down the line, is like, "Hey, I recognize you, Sebastian." I know immediately. Ah, you know that's why I don't recognize him because he calls me Sebastian. Like it, it, it might sound, oh, like, okay, it might yeah, sound yeah, weird yeah. to you, but my, yeah, yeah, yeah. my circle, is Butch. <laughs> Yeah. My wife, by the way, refused calling me Butch or Sebastian for her, so she's the only one that's important that calls me Sebastian. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Butch is for my close circle. So even though we meet a decade later and you call me Butch, I know that at some point, you know, and then it, I'll probably remember you, but you see where I'm going? So I use it as a tool, Butch or Sebastian. Yeah, it amuses me when spouses call their yeah. husbands or partners by their nickname. Yeah. Like, so I can think of three examples. So, Bags. Yeah. Jess calls Bags Bags. Really? But yeah, well, I, well, I've heard of her. I don't know if that's just I when she's referring to his friends about him, because I met up with her the other day, and when she was referencing Bags, she was saying Bags as opposed to Ben. And there's another guy called Grovesy, and his missus calls him Grovesy. And I'm pretty sure that's how she always refers to him as Grovesy. Yeah. Maybe in the house when I was looking at it, it's like, his yeah. first name Jesus that rain I can hear and then there was there was someone uh, there was someone who he didn't stay in for very long but his nickname was Albert his first name was not Albert his surname was not Albert he was just called Albert and his missus who I think he's now divorced from would call him Albert like Ruccini that was his yeah. name Albert and it, it, was, like it wasn't his name. first name yeah. his first name was Ricky mm-hmm. <laughs> his missus would call him Albert yeah. this is funny it amuses me it amuses me anyway do you miss Canada? I do. Really? I Go do. on, what do you miss about it? Um, I miss um, the land, you know, it's, it's, it's more open, it's more space. Um, it takes a while here. I live in London, so, you know, to, to go and see nature takes a long time. In Canada, nature is always, even if you're in a big city, ugh, Toronto, you're 40 minutes away from wilderness, you know. I miss that. I miss the people. Obviously, I miss my friends. And family, but uh, I, I I don't miss the culture. 
I, I'm, I'm well, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be in the UK now. Um, I, I do actually like the history here and, and the culture. Um, there's no real, you know, I'm Canadian. We don't have a strong old culture, you see what I mean? So it's, yeah, you can even hear it in that. Good so if you can hear background noise in this podcast, it's, it's hammering down with rain outside and there's a tin roof yeah. um, where we're recording today. But yeah, go on. And ice hockey. I cannot even watch live ice hockey here. Even if I, I tried subscribing to the NHL network, but, but because, you know, now they block certain countries. I can't even get a pay good money to, to watch hockey. So I have to watch... Uh, YouTube or you know in the games that they're too old I need to introduce you to some websites mate where you'll be able to watch no, the ice hockey I, I, yes I, I do it but oh it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 uh, yeah so so I do but it's, it's a pain because those links they'll they'll get flagged or something so now you gotta find another alternate yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I see what you're saying but uh you ask me what I miss miss hockey Misc uh, wilderness and shooting. Uh, we don't have a great gun culture, but you can legally own a pistol, a carbine. Uh, it changed recently, actually, pistols and. and oh, you can carbine. legally own a pistol, yeah. You can legally own a carbine, yeah. You do? Yeah, you can, yeah. You can not legally a, own one. No, no, no. I was, I was looking it up. I, I, really? I was literally looking it up yesterday because I did a. Who was I talking to about gun laws and all that? Oh, a guy called. Um, Oh, Kim Hughes, ex EOD guy, and he spends a lot of time. Well, his his job now is a lot, a lot to do with firearms and shooting and weapons training and stuff like that. He spends a lot of time in the states. Anyway, long story short, I think on that podcast we, I referenced or he referenced the UK being like middle ground for somewhere between a state or a country which has, you're not allowed any firearms. Mm -hmm and what the US is where you can have anything you fucking want right because um, I see I see the UK as like middle ground it's like you can have firearms here mm -hmm. we are heavily it's heavily regulated but you can own the firearm here you can own a pistol you can own a carbine you can own a shotgun and you can sport shoot them somewhere 100% oh. so, the, so, the, so the difference over here is um, you ju you, there's more hoops to jump through to allow to be allowed to legally own one and you can't so, and self-defense is not a legitimate reason to own one so you have to have a legitimate reason to own a firearm same, same. it can be something you do with your job it can be um there is there is a rule where you're allowed to own one if it is to put animals out of the misery after they've been accidentally harmed for example you run over a deer it's dying Farmers. and you can come yeah 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 Far yeah, exactly pest control you can do it sport shooting you can do it um so you can do it and you can, and pistols yeah. and stuff like that but of the different types of firearm for example pistol mm -hmm. they're like you can't legally own a nine milli pistol for yeah. example yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh i'm happy to report my my uh long range my 308 rifle you know, built like a sniper rifle, uh, made by Prairie Gunworks, it is in the UK at the moment. I haven't seen it yet. Coming a bit closer there, because it's yeah. rain. Just yeah. slightly. I yeah. managed to... Uh, <laughs> Fashion um, things. Yeah, so, so through some contacts, my, my rifle is now in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's a process, like you said. I have to jump through hoops. But uh, at the moment, it's in a vault on an approved range and out because i'm an immigrant i'm a foreigner right so i'll be able to sign it out like a guest but magically this rifle will never be signed out to anyone that's wants to partake in the sport of shooting it's just going to be me when i show up i can pay my i pay my fee just like someone that's visiting this range to do the experience of shooting but it's there for me to sign pay my so they own the rifle yeah, that's my my rifle. But they they do now. They so, so the range there. owns the rifle. Yeah, right. Yeah. I got, ah, that's a good. They, that's a good system. Yeah, look, it's through. I, I got a around, pretty robust network in the shooting community in Canada. And it happens that a guy that I know does business. It, it's with here, right? The, the, yeah. Uh, but that's not illegal. What's being said? Yeah, there's nothing illegal nothing about it now. because it, I'm, I'm showing up with like anyone yeah. that wants to do the experience of shooting a bolt action rifle. It just happens that this one will never be released oh, cool. to, to the public. You know? Yeah, cool. 
Yeah. What um, did you, so did you grow up shooting in Canada? No, zero. I grew up in Montreal, Canada, big city, about the you know a bit smaller than London. Stop now. Eh? Um, no, I'm a city boy. What's um, Montreal like compared to London? I've got I've never been to Canada. Um, well, you have to go to Canada. Um, Montreal is is uh, one of the big. You know, one of the two cities, uh, big cities in, in the province of Quebec, so the French Canadian province I was talking about. Um, and it's one of the places you need to see in Canada. It's a nice, it's a vibrant city, uh, multicultural. The summers there are great. The food is great because, you know, the French lineage. And uh, yeah, I, I grew up in, in kind of like, I don't know how you guys call it here, estates, you know, like a rundown part of town. Yeah, um, um, yeah, states, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, where poor people live in. Grew up in a council estate. Yeah, 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 kind of. Yeah. So it's state, was it state provided? No, it wasn't. But uh, no, no, it wasn't. And, and we do have those type of, of estates and stuff, but it's not as, yeah, here there's many. Super common, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Not, not common. It's just you pay low rent because your place is shit, your landlord's an asshole. And um, yeah, so that's where I grew up. It's a uh, eastern part. Montreal's an island. You know, it, it, it's an island on a, on a big river, the St. Lawrence River. It's a huge island, but it's on a river. Right? Is it really? Yeah, I'll show you on satellite imagery after. Uh, <laughs> so you can. Play. How wide is that river? Jesus. Uh, not, not that wide. Look, um, uh, at some points, a K. It's a huge river because it, it connects all the way to the, to the ocean. Yeah. You know, it's, it goes inland. Quebec City is on the shore yeah, of the big right river. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, look at it. Quebec City is, is um, on the shore of it, and yeah. then Montreal is, is an island. If you type, uh, if you type Montreal, Canada. Montreal. Can yeah. Sorry, people, uh, I can't show you this. Uh, Montreal, look. Canada. Let's have a look. Um, what do you think is on that subject of council houses? For example, it's like state-provided accommodation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? So you're aware of the system over here. Yeah, what do you think I'm about it compared to in Canada? Well, I th it's good idea or a bad idea? you need to help people that are struggling you know uh, a lot of people just just like here i'm sure they, they take advantage of it i'm not saying it doesn't exist but they will not I, do, I don't think they provide us with free lodging but you get free money right from taxpayers so, so that's a big thing and there's a lot of uh, i'm lucky my, my parents weren't scamming the government the government we were legit poor and um, they, they were getting some money uh, from the government to, to pay rent, to pay food, not much food. Um, you know, I, I was one of those families that, I don't know, at Christmas, you know, you get Christmas baskets, you get two, three day worth of food from the church. That, that's why I'm, uh, I speak to God is because I, I basically got semi-raised because my dad had to work so much, so many jobs at low pay, but to, to make a living, I barely see him. And, and uh, my mom was at a small job, but mostly stay at home mom. And, uh, but she wasn't great. So next door neighbors, I, w I lived across the street of a church, Christian church. And then my next door neighbor was where the nuns live. So I basically got, I think saved um, and, and spent a lot of time with nurses, uh, nuns. And then the, you know, obviously they would bring me to church and I understood um, religion and the spiritual and we'd pray together uh, before dinner, and that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, so honest living, honest upbringing in the city, no hunting. Mm -hmm. We kind of explained that why, why did I join then is this part of Montreal I don't know if you ever heard of the Hells Angels. You know, yeah. It's worldwide, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was especially big in, in the province of Quebec. You know, we could. I know a lot about that stuff because I grew up in there. Is Montreal in the province of Quebec? Yes. Right, okay. Yes, it's not the capital. Capital is Quebec City. Montreal is the second biggest, you know, city. Actually, in size, it's bigger than Quebec, but it's not the capital. Um, so I grew up in a, in, in a neighborhood where the, the Hells Angels, the French-Canadian Hells Angels chapter, was kind of their hood you know it's the place that they are and they're actually like robin hoods because they need to recruit from the street uh you know robin hood right like takes from the rich gives to the poor 
that's not what they were doing, but they were really nice to the poor community, throwing barbecues in the summer. So you grow up thinking they're heroes. You know? So you, so would you go, you and your family would go to these barbecues? Uh, me, as a kid, with so my what, friends. So what were they like? What, what would... <sighs> You know, when you, when you grow up and you don't have, um, how do you say, idols or, or you know, you, you just live in a uh, run-down neighborhood and there's a lot of crime, and prostitution, drugs. And then you see these guys that have cool motorcycles, they're jack on steroids. Like, that, that becomes automatically like, oh, I want to be like that guy. Oh, these guys are cool. Plus, they're throwing barbecues in the summer in the park. And I can get a free hot dog and there's music and, <laughs> you know, and I'm talking young. I'm talking like, because when you live in a place like that, the, your dad's away a lot. He can't really money, be a father and money. He's a, I had a great father, but he's away. And, and then your mom's not doing well. And then you're just in the street all day. You know, that's six, seven year old. At, the park is three, four blocks down. I just spend the whole day. And it's the old, you know, 80s 90s right like go out when it was come, okay yeah, come when, home yeah, when yeah, it yeah, starts yeah. getting dark right yeah uh, i lived it at an extreme level i was on the street with my friends becoming street smart and and then making sure you know that I, that I go back home i saw a lot of stuff um but anyway going back to the hell angels now they're your heroes and, and you kind of aspire to be like them right and uh they they were honest. They were honestly really good, really nice. You're a young boy. I'm saying like from six to ten year old, let's say, you know. And then they're just because they they're crime, right? So they they see that you'll be a teenager someday. And yeah, I don't think it, it's that overt, though, is it? It's it's like uh, when I grew up. Uh, I just think we're really talking about it. It's not. I don't mean overt. It's it's not that sinister. It's like so the the church or, or religion mm -hmm. does a similar thing. Yeah. Um, I'm not that I'm saying churches. I understand criminals, what you're right? saying. So in one of the places where I lived when I was adult, one of the places, where, so I grew up Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. going to church, oh, mother used to make us go all the time. Like at one point we're going every Sunday and then, anyway, so I got brought up religion. And uh, then when I was an adult, was when I was married, there was, I remember on the estate that we were living, not estate, like on the, on the housing estate that we lived on, um, the local church, the the vicar, through or whoever he was in the church, he did a like basically like you were mm -hmm. describing there, a barbecue mm -hmm. just for the community. Mm -hmm. Anyone could go. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter your creed, your skin colour, your age, your whatever. You could go and and it was just cool. And it was mm -hmm. it's such a nice thing. But I I don't think that's done like with the active intention of we need to recruit. Mm -hmm. I think it's like with the Hell's Angels as well. It's like there is a rule here. Mm -hmm. We we do good we do good for the community where we can like we'll guarantee be one of the hell's angels thing as you experienced same with the church we do good we are here for as generally as a force for good blah 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 blah. but i think that kind of those actions have been set in stone way back when when they realized mm -hmm. you know these are like this is how we need to get people on board I and mean, we recruit people and it, they're just two examples of two organizations how many other organizations do it and it is like, definitely the government do it does it yeah 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 and regardless of how it came about Definitely not a bad thing. Definitely not a bad. I mean, was that a bad thing? You going to, uh, being around the Hell's Angels at that time? It sounds would, to me like a right cool, cool as thing. As a to do. six year old, seven year old, <laughs> with my friends, we'd eat as many odd dogs as we can. Were they trying to push drugs on you? No, no, no. That's Whatever that's what I mean. I've never saw exactly. any. You know, these guys were were super superheroes to us, and and, and I'm hungry. I, I haven't fed myself because I, I would have to cook for myself at like six, seven year old. I remember, I, my, early oh, oh, yeah. mem my early memories is, is you know, my, my mom sleeping all day and I have to feed myself. Way better in the summer to, oh, the, you know, my, my friend would show up. Hey, oh. uh, the hell's, you know, call them the hell's, <laughs> the hell's at the, the, at the park. And then we stuff her face with, you know, yeah. all, all we can eat. There. Yeah, and they, they, you look. So that you understand why it kind of there was a, a, a separation there is at some point my dad got a, a better job in the movie industry you know and, and so we managed to move away so my entire childhood was not really poor we moved 
on the North Shore. So, you know, it's an island. We, we moved on the North Shore when I was about 15 year old. So that, that I, we upgraded, you know, we went in, in, in a better neighborhood, better school. So my poor time frame of my life stops at around, like, look, it's a long time ago, 14, 15 year old. That, that probably saved me because that's, that's the age that then they would be like, hey, do you want to make a little bit extra cash? Of course, it's a, it's a crime organization. So, but, but I was there in the time frame that they're putting the seed mm. in, in your brain that, hey, we're a good organization. You need a family. You need a brotherhood, you know? I was craving that uh, at a young age. Therefore, I ended up in the military. But uh, yeah, we, we managed to move. My dad's a smart man, so he, he worked hard, hard, hard to, to manage to network his way into a good paying job. And then we moved out, better neighborhood, better school. And um, then I took a different path, right? The, the, the nuns I was talking about, they were smart also. You know, I think the youngest one must have been in her early 50s or whatever, you know, old, old nuns. And, and throughout this time frame, I'm telling you that I'm living basically on the streets almost, except my bed is, is in a flat. They, they would come to the park and, and, and try to usher us out of there. You see, you see the dynamics the make there? Yeah, the nuns, because it's, it's right in the neighborhood, right? Everything's close. And they, they know that these guys are they're criminals, got all these kids at the park. They know what they're up to, and they try to bring you to the light, to, to the church, and then... And, they would, you know, the in Canada and most church here probably has a basement, big open basement. So they would have hockey, floor hockey in there. They're trying to, okay, you ate now? Let's go to the church basement, play sports and stuff. So it was always, you mm -hmm. don't see that as a kid. I know now because I'm an adult. They were really trying to get us out of the hands of the devil to, to bring us to the light. You see the dynamic there? Mm -hmm. But then, like I said, 14, 15 year old, I was a pretty normal kid. My, my my dad was making good money, and it was a total flip. You know? mm. Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, I didn't go this. Uh, I didn't think this podcast would go there. Well, you took it, damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I did. Huh? <laughs> Straight into it. No, it's in, it's interesting. Got, it's interesting. I got on diagnose. I know I have TBI. It's not diagnosed. I'm not looking for diagnosis, but. Uh, my brain goes everywhere all the time. My, my wife tells me, like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, but it's interesting hearing other people, how other people grew up. You know, we have this, uh, it's, I think, um, even for us, right, we're quite well, tra well traveled, you know what I mean? And I think even for us, it, 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 we'll never have a grasp on how different some part of the oh, yeah. are. I love hearing stories. Yeah, from it's unbelievable. I mean, then you contrast that with some of the like Middle Eastern countries you've been to, you know, the, the African countries you've been to and see how they grew up. It's like, there's a lot to you talking there about the eighties and nineties and growing up and you go out and you come back when it's getting dark and your parents didn't give a fuck. No, and, there's no oh cell my, phones. Oh, no cell yeah. phones. And I, and I grew up on a farm mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere. So if I like fell off some, in massive like uh yeah, know, like yeah. drop which nearly happened a couple of times or you know i managed to shoot myself or whatever in the eye with my, my pellet gun at the time right you know what i mean no one would have known about it my parents wouldn't have known about it because they wouldn't be they wouldn't start worrying until oh it's getting dark where's mm -hmm. where's hugh mm -hmm. but it was just normal it's, there's a lot to be said about how that develops you as a human being the resilience that gives you and growing up in that way because it wasn't just like you in montreal me and the farm in in like south wales mm -hmm. that was pretty much every kid you finish school you'd go out and play but i say that maybe every kid from the lower class perspective anyway, the working class perspective anyway you know that, like mm -hmm. that we grew up in um and so I can't speak for like middle class, upper class, probably very different for them, but it does develop you in a very different way yeah. in terms of resilience. Like the way I, the, the way things are now, cell phones and inf the information age, information technology and everything else, I don't know, it seems like we're just a lot more worried about things than we used to be. Maybe unnecessarily so, but I was, I was, do you know what? Who mentioned? Oh, you mentioned pedophiles on the uh, mm -hmm. on the icebreaker. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do not. I do not like that. But you know, what I was thinking. I was thinking about this the other day, so, um, I, and I was thinking about. I was reading about narcissism, and one of the things I thought is around, like for example, pedophilia. And the question always comes around is: Is there more of it now than there was mm -hmm. historically? And you, and and I, 
He used to say, no, we're just, we're just more aware of it because of the way Media we stuff. access to information, right? But I think that's not the case. I now think there is actually more of it. Oh, you think? Same with narcissism. So on the narcissism side, right? And the reason being is it's really interesting. Where the hell did I read this? Where the hell did I read this? Oh, I'll have to look it up. Anyway, so basically, back in the day, before before big cities, big townships, before the like the information age, even even not so long ago as like the seventies and eighties, right? Just just a little bit pre-internet, but, so, but certainly like seventeen hundreds, eighteen hundreds, nineteen hundreds. If you were if you had something significantly bad about your character, significantly wrong about you. Um, for example, paedophile, for example, narcissist, anything that is bad to be around, you basically were much less likely, your genes are much, like, like, much le less likely to survive. Yeah. Let's say you're in a tribe, let's say you're in a little village in the middle of nowhere, where, again, migration to different areas is much less because tra the, the, um, the ability to, so what you call it, travel uh, technology, travel mm -hmm. technology, planes, cars, none of that have been invented, right? So if you're a complete prick, right or horrible bastard it was highly unlikely you'd be able to breed and your genes wouldn't last mm -hmm. so they just started dying out like less likely you would, would prevent, get, right you know if Literally. you go far back you'd get killed yeah exactly yeah. these days right this is i was specifically reading around narcissism right and these days it is much more likely that you can get away with being a narcissist so let's say i do something real bad you outcast me and all my friend group and everyone let's say in my circle who knows me completely outcast me mm -hmm. if it's that bad i can up sticks and i can move yeah. to a different part of the uk or i can move to a different part of the world where no one fucking knows mm -hmm. me no one knows me mm -hmm. no one knows that background and i can start, start to live the lie again yeah. start to live and get away with it and i think the same doing, is happening you're, you're with pedophilia yeah i think the same is happening yeah, with yeah, pedophilia right. there can be pedophiles in whatever other part of the world mm -hmm. get caught or nearly get caught or are about to be arrested whatever they just move to a different part of the world where no one fucking knows yeah. and, I, and so I and think it is a case mistakes. you exactly. learn from your mistakes you get exactly. better at it so I think it is a case it has increased mm -hmm. has, how much I don't know but it has to be the same as that, that example from narcissism you can get away with being a bastard more mm -hmm. so bastards are pervaded more mm -hmm. it's the same thing in terms of the prevalence of like diseases be it they're not going away diseases and I think Part of that is because unhealthy living is more accepted now than it was. Way more. Well, way more accepted. Unhealthy, and I mean, you know, from, from things like diet, to diet nutrition, to, you know, inactive lifestyle, sedentary, sedentary things, the, you know, the, 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 the need to work much, much, much more for much less money now than it used to be back in the day, yeah. you know. Um, so and we you don't just, have to walk anywhere if we don't want to anymore. Think about it. If you decide that I'm not walking more than a hundred feet today, it's possible. You got these electric scooter to get you to your corner to, to get an Uber. Oh, Look. walk anymore. Walk. Yeah, I thought you said work. Yeah, I can't walk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, you do have to work. Uh, well, no, you don't, mate. Bit. No, you don't. Yeah. It goes back into the conversation about I, counts, uh, like uh, well, then there's self state welfare. Well, then there's self-esteem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I was saying walk. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the same thing with state yeah. welfare, right? Yeah. It's like, I see a need for state welfare, but I think certainly in the UK, we've got it wrong. Mm -hmm. Or it's not, it's far from perfect. And one of the, I mean, one of the, so one example, not example, one one aspect of that is, like you said, it's such a complicated system of yours, state welfare system, like overly complicated, I think, that it's really easy for people to find loopholes and exploit it. Mm -hmm. There's, so there's a, there's a, an example, there's a, place near where I live, a place, a house near where I live. It is, it's council property. So the tenants there have either got it super cheap, right? Or not paying at all because it's been subsidized by other welfare things. Fine. There's a Nissan GTR parked on the drive. Mm -hmm. a, a Nissan GTR mm -hmm. parked on the drive. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon. You'll mm -hmm. see real spanking new cars mm -hmm. parked on the drives, these places where you know mm -hmm. they are houses which are state welfare provided. Mm -hmm. They're bluffing, they're bluffing. I connect with you there. Where yeah. I live, there's about a thousand flats, and, and yeah. half of it is guys yeah. like me paying for you know heavy rent, uh, and, and then half of it is is a console, yeah. and then there's Mercedes's and their BMWs, right? Yeah. And then on the other end, so that's like that's people taking advantage of it who shouldn't be doing it, right? And then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got people 
who are on state welfare, they want to get off state welfare. They don't want to be on it. They want to get off it. But there, there is a problem. I've seen this several times about this, this, this uh, scenario. And people listening to this may be thinking, yeah, I know, I know that's the case. People listen to this, to this. Someone may be on state welfare. I don't know. And there may be in, in a situation where you want to get off state welfare, but the pay you need to reach, the, the salary you need to reach, which will pay enough mm -hmm. to match what you are getting subsidised mm -hmm. by the by the council, local council, and be able to provide your own uh, money for the home, mm -hmm. the gap's too far. Yeah. You cannot get out of the state welfare system because you, by getting a full-time job, for yeah. example, unless it pays crazy money, yeah. Right, compared to what you, what you you're you're able to earn based on qualifications, experience, you're going to lose out. So you get off the state benefit system, you go on to you get a full time job, you are you are you're lost you're money. You can, yeah. all of a sudden can't probably afford, lose all the benefits. Yeah, it's too. fucking crazy. The benefits, right? That and, the that, state gets. and in that situation, it's and I know people in that situation, and it's not good. Mm -hmm. They want to be off it. They cannot get off it because it doesn't make financial sense. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you know, how do you get out of that situation? It's almost a similar situation to. Um, a similar no yeah a similar motivation no 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 wrong a similar situation to that other end of the spectrum where the people are exploiting the system they're exploiting the system because it makes financial sense but they are uh, they are taking advantage of complex rules mm -hmm. yeah and no and they're not going to get caught whereas on the top end where people want to get off the system but they can't they're just like fucking hell yeah, man. They're trying. but it's like the, the, the reasons uh, that, that those two situations exist are the same mm -hmm. overly complex and the system's is fucked mm -hmm. it's, it's bad it's bad mm -hmm. it's bad you know um and, I, 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 and, it, and it, it burns down the generations right you get mm -hmm. whole generations of families mm -hmm. they grow up the parents have never worked so they're like i'm never going to work yeah. and it's just oh, you, and they're going to have kids because they get more money if they have mm -hmm. kids and then they get more money if they're single or they appear to be single yeah, yeah. and then there's a lot of that yeah it? yeah it's it's almost like um again it's that system it's that thing of wrong attitudes and things being able being able to pervade mm -hmm. and the, i think here in the uk the bad welfare state system that we have is allowing that to happen. It's not good. It's not good, you know what I mean? The fact of the matter is, I think, people are happier if they are working and sustaining themselves, they will sustain themselves, rather than have to rely on someone else. Of course. You know what I mean? I, I, of course I know what you mean. Mm. You know, I could not imagine myself relying on, on whoever, you know? Uh, to, to sustain myself uh, I, I, my life would be probably easier you know i can do whatever i want money's coming in no no you, you see what i mean but 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 then i go to bed at night and do i feel fulfilled do i feel like you know i'm conservative i'm conservative and, and under my belief it's mine is that a man is a provider a protector a provider I would go to bed every night feeling unfulfilled. I'd be like, I'm a loser. My, my mental state would go right down. Because like, I don't understand it. You know, the single mom that's she made bad choices and she's got two kids, two different dads, and she's struggling. That's what the state is there for. A man, and it's my belief, a man stand up for himself, finds work, work 16 hours a day, three different jobs as he needs to do. And that I've learned from my dad. My dad did it. And, and I'm so proud that he passed that down to me. And I will never need anyone to, to, to help me out and, and taking care of my family. I'll flip burgers at McDonald's, you know? And, and I did. I d divorced years ago and I, w I was unable to, because, you know, military guys, we don't make that much money. I fucking delivered pizza as a deck commander in special operations. I, I was finishing my 12 hour shift, you know, day, day at the unit. And because I was so tight, you know, we won't go into all the details, but I was so tight. I was delivering fucking pizzas for Domino's. I was Chinese. I was delivering Chinese meals, man. Yeah. Because Same a fucking man yeah, needs Chinese. to do what he needs to do to, yeah. to provide for his, his daughter that yeah. he doesn't live with anymore. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. And, and you, you want a funny story, you know? It's a small town. Like our unit is, is not in a big city. They, they, you know, they try to put it somewhere that's less eyes on it and stuff. So it's a small town of Petawa, Ontario. It's, it's like twenty thousand people. It's small. So I start this. I don't. I don't tell the unit. 
that you know I'm struggling because then they might put me on a list that I'm not deployable or whatever. So you hide injuries, you hide everything. Right? <coughs> and and I, I got my little Domino shirt and my hat, and I'm starting and they're teaching. <laughs> <laughs> they're teaching me what to do, and you know. And uh, how many times do you think I, tung tung tung, you know, delivering the fresh pizza to the fuck my commanding officer. <laughs> Some, you know, yeah. the, the intelligence officer, and he, they open the door, they think it's a joke. They got one of their prime fucking deck commander there delivering two large pizzas. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, boss, you got to pay the bills. Man. And, and, and it became kind of also like a running gag, you know, but Butch delivering pizzas for Domino's. And I owned it. I'm like, guys, fucking have to do what I have to do. Right? And, and then, funny enough, didn't take too long that other guys were coming to me. Hey, Butch, can you get me in there? I need a bit of extra money. <laughs> I won't say names, obviously, but there's a few guys that like, I'll do that. You know, you know, all div divorce is high in the military, right? Especially special operations. So these guys had bills to pay too, child support, and, and it becomes so. You know, I'm a leader. <laughs> I was the first one in there, and then there's some guys that were like, Yeah, I made fun of you, but. Does it pay good? How much does it pay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the thing with those jobs, isn't it? Because you can fit them around like your day job. It's just like night, mm -hmm. evening time. Like the Chinese is to finish work. And then uh, if I was in the UK, finish work. And then I didn't do it for a long time. I did it for a no, fair neither. few months though. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and then got to go and deliver. It only, it only happened once where I delivered to someone who knew me. Mm -hmm. I was in Colchester. Yeah. And he was out. He's an ex, he's ex Tupac, an ex Legionnaire as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he looked at me like cock. We didn't know each other. We looked at me cock eyes and like, you three power, you here, aren't you? I was yeah. like, fuck, yeah. fuck, yeah. fuck. Yeah. I didn't want people to find it's out. It's the me. first few times after that yeah. I, I joke about it. And, and since, <laughs> first of all, I'm happy to meet a fellow uh, delivery. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, I like funny stories. And, and um, I didn't that long too, maybe a year. Oh, yeah. If that, that, if that. Just, just to get me back on top. And, um, but the thing is, and back then I was... What were you driving? A big, you know, Canada. A big, expensive um, <laughs> I was in a pickup people, truck. I was in a people car, yeah. yeah, yeah. People hey, car. Okay, it made good money with tip. <laughs> T tip was how you make money. Um, but, but my funny story there is, is I, I was in my early 30s, you know, detachment commander, uh, quite a bit of experience now in the military so so you know eye level stuff and planning and whatever tactical decisions do you think i'm in do you think i'm um what do i say uh you know the new guy at domino's it's all kids right it, it's a starting job my, my my boss my manager is like 17 year old it's a bunch of teenagers i had a great time in there because i, I was running the place if i was on shift or clients that are difficult, you know, because you can take out clients that are difficult. You think I'm going to be like, oh, yes, yes, ma'am, yes, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, like, hey, you're not happy, go, go to fucking Pizza Hut. Like, you know, and these kids, <laughs> they were, God bless them. And these kids were like, I can't believe you just said that to that person. I'm like, because if I get fired, then, then whatever, you know, yeah. I'm a government employee. Like I got a job, it's just I'm doing that for extra yeah. cash. I had a great time with these kids. And, and then uh, over the year that I was there, it became like, it's funny. I became kind of like their, their, what do you call it? Like big brother, you know, I, I've, I've listened to them. Like, oh, I got this problem, this bully at school, like that kind of shit. Mm. I'm like, hey, stand up for yourself. Like the, the other young men, you know, I'm like, no, no, don't, don't. I'm not saying, I didn't tell them I'll go punch him in the face, I, but I felt like it was a big brother. Look, man, if, if, if you let him, you know, pick on you once, he's going to do it twice and three times. You just have to stop. I remember that that one kid, uh, we were washing dishes at the back, you know, and I'm like, man, you stand up for yourself, buddy. And then he came back, uh, you know, another shift I was with him and he's like, hey, Butch, it worked, you know, thank you. So I, I did some good in there at Domino's Pizza. And, it, it, and to date, it's my favorite pizza. Do you know, I just realized he's left the covers on these fucking microphones. Can you hear yourself now? Pull that, pull that cover off. Let's see that. Let's see that change. Pull it off. Talk to me. Yeah. No, that, it. Yeah, that is definitely. My, so. But it, sorry, people. I don't if see if it, the audio's just changed, it's because we had the covers were on the microphones. Didn't realize they were put on. Yeah, they've been they've been put on by bags to keep 
because he's yeah, yeah. not here, is he? Oh my god! That I has don't definitely see changed the diff- audio there. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, right. So if the audio has changed. It's got clearer. It's because we've taken the muffles off the microphones. The muffles off the microphones. Do you know what the good thing is at the minute? Is there is uh, even more so now back in the back in the days. Mm-hmm. So much different ways you can earn money at different times. Yeah. yeah. Or just fit it in around you again age information Mm -hmm. information technology internet and all that so many different ways Mm -hmm. but um i mean i do i mean going back to what you're saying like you believe that man should be the breadwinner and and i think yeah i think the man should be and, and not should be the man naturally is the default to be the breadwinner only because the man can be more available most of the time. And I'm talking in a, in a, I'm talking in a scenario where your family with young children or child, yeah, right, for all sorts of reasons I've discussed previously in the podcast. But it doesn't. I don't. Th- I don't think that that means that a woman should automatically no, 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 be no. defaulted to stay at home. Not yeah, the case. But I think this naturally the man's yes, going to be a default because, but for a bunch of, a bunch of different reasons, right? A bunch of different reasons for. I'm not going to go. In, I'm not going into like. I mean, yeah. You know, the reality is in a, in a family family situation. The man is more employable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like that. The man is more employable yeah. because and I don't woman, be- mother instincts, young children, you know, things like I've mentioned before, breastfeeding, mother's got a natural parenting instinct, all these historical things. Mm-hmm. But again, what I like about today is this is a good thing that's come about off, off a lot of the, pro- the, the progressive like shift over the last years. In a lot of scenarios, I think is way, way, way counterproductive over the top counterproductive but i do like a lot that definitely it is a more welcoming world certainly in the western world that we're living in for women who want to drive forward and have a career or have a working life like men do i think most maybe not maybe may not want that but if they do it's there for them fine yeah yeah, yeah. i don't want people a, a thing that was saying a woman stays home and yeah. cooks and cleans and raises children and then the men is the provider. What I was saying is it's in our nature. Yeah. yeah. A yeah, strong yeah. couple that both have successful career. Wow. You know, and, and they can make it work with the kids. It's <clears throat> perfection. But but think about think about myself. How I would feel if 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 <coughs> my, Excuse me. my my woman has the big career and is the main provider. And I'm sitting on my couch, tumbling my thumbs, playing video games. I would go to bed feeling like, what's the word, emasculated? You know, like, so yes, of course. All the best, a woman, have a great career. It's a strong couple if they're both, you know, successful in their career. Of course. But the men, for sure. He doesn't need to make more money or, or provide more than his woman. But why he needs is that? To pro- why? Why? No, I'm saying he doesn't need to. Oh, but as long oh, as long right, as he right. feels fulfilled in what what I thought you said he did need to. No, I right, know okay. he, he, no, he does need to provide and, and and have this basic instinct of the man that's providing something. I'm not saying he needs to be above and, but I, I think that it's it's in our genes to it's natural provide yeah. natural. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, I yeah. think that the vibe will get it'll get less. But I don't think mm-hmm. I don't think it'll ever go away. Like it would only go away. If men all of a sudden were able to have babies, right? Yeah, which they're I'm, trying. I'm, I'm, they're deadly I serious, bet they're right? trying at the moment. Or <laughs> yeah, or or if um, yeah, that's the only way I could mm-hmm. see it. Or all of a sudden. But okay, let me stop you there, my friend. <laughs> don't don't no don't. It's a great discussion. Don't you see it nowadays a little bit though that there's men that are happy to. Just do nothing. That'll uh, always be the case, though. Uh, well, okay, maybe because of media and stuff, it was less, you know, advertised before. No, but I, sorry, I think that, I, sorry, I think that's always been the case, though. You go back to the discussion we were just having, right? Mm-hmm. You couldn't be either. So, if you were, f- it's the same for female, right? If you were a woman back in the day and you didn't want to have kids, mm-hmm. when I say back in the day, we're talking thousands of years mm-hmm, ago mm-hmm. or even maybe hundreds of years ago mm-hmm. if you didn't want our children yeah or you were unhealthy yeah um or perceived to be unhealthy then you were it's highly likely you weren't ever going to breed because mm-hmm. that's what 
men wanted. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, right, if you were a man who was not energetic or who was, uh, I say not energetic, who was not able to work, who was not able to hunt and forage, who was, or who was unhealthy, mm -hmm. it was highly likely mm -hmm. you were not going to breed because yeah, so it's not what was attractive work, because yeah. it was not good for evolution, yeah. which is where we are now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But so back to the subject of like more men who are not like traditional men is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, but I think that's because it's, it's easier to live now than it was. I get state welfare being a one example more access to you know more access to food resources shelter than they, than they used to be easier access to it right cheaper in some regards right um less effort needed to get your food for example you don't have to go and hunt hunting bears and, no not bears you don't have to go hunting the chickens and meat and and and, and foraging and not foraging farming crops and all that you can just go and buy off the shelf it happens right so i think you can get away with being lazier or being less active, or wrong, yeah, less, being less active. Less yeah. active. But that means is that mean that does mean though, that for people who are who are in the, especially for men who are more traditionally minded in terms of or, or more driven mm -hmm. instead of that like get up and go about them, it, it does mean they're much more likely to have a more prosperous life than what the yeah. the lower activity counterparts yeah. are. I think. Yeah, yeah you know, cur currently I work with a lot of work for. Uh, a lot of wealthy men or, or women, uh, millionaires, billionaires, and, and it, 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 this new, you know, new career of mine for the last uh, almost five years, it opened my mind a lot on, on <coughs> how can I explain that? You know, but before I was, uh, I was privy to this world of, of the rich and wealthy. Maybe I had a bit of misconception, you know, I, because I was, I've never experienced it. I, I would be like, "Oh, trust fund millionaires," and once you know, <laughs> once the grandfather makes millions, then the rest of the the, the lineage is, is rich and trust funds, right? There is that, but I also, and, and maybe it's it's just luck. But most people I met at the moment, they work hard for that money, even even if they made it, well, probably because it's never enough. They need to make more, but. I'm watching men and women just on the phone, business all day, up early. They, they, they work, and that's why they're successful. I will never, you know, until you prove me otherwise that all the money you got is, is given to you by family, whatever, I will not make that judgment again because I can see how much work it is to, to be that successful. Yeah, I mean that. But, and again, yeah, yeah. maybe it, uh, it's pretty recent, right? The, the last five years. Yeah, uh, maybe I'm, I'm lucky that I didn't get to see one of those. Uh, everything got spoon fed all my life. The ones that I saw so far, I can see the amount of work that needs to be done. That's that's what I'm saying. Um, mm. No, I know what you mean your yeah, entrepreneurialism yeah, yeah. and graft. And that. I mean, yeah. I mean, even with the fact, you're right? I mean, it, obviously, it does exist. I mean, it does. You it see, does for sure. My first experience with it, of it was, was in, in the military, and you meet certain, certain units, certain regiments, and um, you meet certain characters, and they're literally born into. And this is just, I'm just explaining my first experience of it, which happened to me in the military, right before any mm -hmm. guards people mm -hmm. kick, kick off. Uh, um, and there was at least one or two that I met, and they were born into, they were born into a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know. But it's still, there's there's still graft there in terms of maintaining it, but much less so. Oh, I, much less, yeah. Like on, the entrepreneurs, one hundred percent, fucking yeah. graft. It, it's it's not blue collar work, right? The work I'm talking about is, it's high stress, but no physical work. But it, I'm privy to, to conversation or. or deals that are multi-million and, and this, that comes with stress well what is an easier stress. life do you reckon uh being so elon musk yeah, elon musk's yeah, position yeah. or elon musk 15 years ago let's mm -hmm. say elon musk 15 mm -hmm. years ago right uh his life is more stressful or less stressful than the life of uh sf operator like yourself um great question I think on average the, across like the five yeah. years in the same time period i'll answer this question with with my really personal opinion i would take from what i'm privy to so far i would take 
the gunfights and the, the risk to <laughs> life I was in. Blue, blue collar kind of simple, you know, one or zero. Then the stress that these guys are under. Mm. Some, from what I saw, again, the stress level is, is, you know, it's not the same, right? It's not risk to life, but, but it's risk to go from hero to zero like this. Well, and in the way that is, I think my life, yeah, I, I think that's quality before. of life. I have yeah, no yeah. will to, to have to deal with other people's money or, or your own millions and making calls that either you go left, you just triple your money, or you go right and it's all gone. Yeah, I take my life before that. I can see the appeal of it, though. I can see the appeal of it. It's like I, I can imagine. And I've run a couple of companies and be part of the running of a couple of companies in the past, and. I, you know, another, none of them were a success in terms of, well, none of them were a success. And success to me of a company is, gets to a point, grows, and someone either wants to buy it, and you, and that's your out, or you are running it, and you're making more money than you ever needed, and, you know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's growth, it's not dying, right? None of the companies I've run in the past were a success. Any stretch of the imagination. But I can see that if I got to the point where one of them was successful, and maybe all that money and, 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 and I got bought out for example and I'm sitting on X amount of pounds money, and maybe I don't need to work ever again I would not be thinking I'm never going to work ever again I'd be thinking let's go again yeah. how can I do this again mm. where do I put money feeling. let's get on board and give me give myself all that stress again because I want to challenge because I want to challenge myself and make people because the whole company when a company goes that way everyone gets everyone gets everyone gets something from it money or satisfaction or ex like it, invaluable experience whatever like everyone mm -hmm. prospers right mm -hmm. and let's go again and do it again but same time inviting all that stress again yeah. it's the same kind of thing with like the operational tempo right yeah. you go out you get smart i say you get smashed. you go out you end up in a smash up you nearly get fucking killed but you don't get killed you end up winning that battle and you think let's go again yeah. you get back in you reset let's go again mm -hmm. let's go again mm -hmm. let's go again you want it you want it you want it mm -hmm. for the same reasons like challenge succeed go again yeah. or stress challenge yeah. succeed yeah. grow experience improve your skill set mm -hmm. learn something from it yeah. reset go again yeah. go again yeah. you know, it just becomes what you get, it's what you get used to isn't it yeah. it's why people want to you're comfortable in what you know right yeah so um, I, I'm in the middle of it right now. I have so much in the last... We would have done this podcast nine months ago. I, I wouldn't have the understanding that I have now about the newfound respect I have for entrepreneurship. The so amount. this is the first company you've started? Yeah, ever. With no training. <laughs> the way you do it, mate. It's the way you do it. Yeah. Remember I, in the intro I said I, I'm not a big reader, so I didn't read business books. Yeah. I am learning as I go, and it's take take my two decade of, of army career aside. Like this is the biggest challenge in my life. Uh, it's not nuts and bolts, shoot, move, communicate. You know, you get comfortable at that, you get better. You do errors, you fix it. Now, now I'm in a totally new environment, an environment that I'm uh, no experience in, and and it's the most difficult thing I've done in my life. I'm enjoying it. Because I love challenges, but wow, on my respect, I was um, I was texting a friend not long ago. That is a small business, which that person grew it. You know, it's ten year old, I think, and and it started really small, and then that per it's getting bigger and stuff. And I I just text, hey, I have a newfound respect for you. I, you have no idea, you know, what, what you built, and it's a small business in that town I'm talking about, the small town. But, but it, pay, it pays uh, her bills and, and she's doing great and it's small niche business. That person is, is an entrepreneur already where, where I want to be in 10 years. And I just said, hey, you know, say I, her husband was serving with me. I'm like, say I did her husband. And then, but I want to tell you like, good for you because I'm living it right now and it's not mm. easy. And uh, yeah, so my, my newfound, mm. any entrepreneur out there, like keep going and it's great because I'm at the start of it and the amount of work that needs to go in there and, and the networking and getting your name out there it's not it's, it's impossible minus minus if maybe if you buy a franchise of something then it's all done for you you pay the cash and then they train you and whatever 
But somebody that starts something from an idea or right at the bottom that no one knows you exist. Wow. And I'm enjoying it, but wow. There's no paycheck. And, you, mm. and you're your own boss, right? There's no paycheck coming in. Oh, I'll get paid at the end of the month. If you don't make it happen, it's not happening. It's beautiful to me i'm enjoying the, the do you know what's underrated just thinking about it, just underrated people who all of those like independent contractors self self-employed guys and girls uh mostly guys in like for example the construction industry and they got just self-employed they own they're a one-man band yeah. and and that is them month to month job lit day to day, day, to day. job to yeah. job they haven't got a salary mm -hmm. they haven't got some pension plan yeah. they haven't got like health uh, like some health health yeah. plan they provided yeah. they're literally going from job to job mm -hmm. to job yeah. to job and they do that just normal like right. they don't even they don't even put they don't i don't know it's like a cultural thing isn't it you don't need to put they don't need to put the like the stress tag on it that's what they do yeah. that's the industry that's what you do mm -hmm. crazy crazy like i i would find that really hard yeah. i did some job like the worst job the, the job i found the hardest the most degrading in a way was uh it was it's sales basically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. business to business sales yeah and it was only commission based there was no salary there was nothing yeah. and it was door to door to door mm -hmm. and you'd have to the the target was you're trying to hit a hundred and pitch to verbally pitch to in person it's not on the phone i think it was i think the target was 150 100 150 businesses a day <sighs> hey, a day yeah, in the door pitch this is like cold calling going into a, an estate agent for example going into a fucking cafe in some cases going to a museum mm -hmm. in pitch out in yeah. pitch out and you'd have to try and a hit day. it was 100 150 maybe even your 200 brain businesses fried. your brain is fried. and then oh, fried mate right. and you're going in right and you try and deliver this pitch in the same like tempo and the same yeah. enthusiasm when you do the first one in the oh morning, my god 150 yeah. the the and day. all you're aiming for yeah. is to get four or five or six sales mm -hmm. on average mm -hmm. a day right now the reason i say it was so degraded you work out the rejection rate on that let's say it's just 100 businesses i was trying to hit i can't it was at yeah. least 100 well the rejection rate is like 95 percent let's say i only get i only want five to say yes 95 percent rejection rate and i was doing that at a point where i was really low in my a really low point in my life but also like my background i've always been a high achiever i've always done things at the uh, just ha just happens to be the case just because life circumstances, I'm not saying I'm fucking gifted in any way, in any way, shape or form. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time in the right industry, like in the, and in the military and did things. And I just, I did very well in a lot of the things I was doing. Go from that to 95% rejection yeah. rate. O honestly, it was soul destroying, soul destroying. And, and I was like, no, can't like ever, it. cannot ever, and ever do this again. Ever do this again. I have a newfound understanding of what you're telling me. Because you, again, you would have told me that a, a year ago, a few months ago, I would have, well, well. Uh, sales joined, is not for me. That's People all I, are fucking great at it. Working some, for the government, it's all I knew, right? Uh, mm. I joined at 17 and I retired at <coughs> 36, 37. I turned 40 this year, yeah, 35, anyway. And that's all I knew is, you know, in Canada, you get paid twice a month, 15th, in the, la the last day of the month. What? Twice a month? Twice a month, 15th. When you're sure. in the military? Yeah, yeah, that's that's how the pay cycle is. You get paid is a it month, the same a in civil street? Huh? Is it the same in, in civilian jobs? No, no, it's all different in civilian jobs. But I'm saying a, get a soldier get a paid. It's everybody, every soldier from, from Why whatever. Is that? It's just how the government pays. Uh, it's a monthly salary, obviously, but... It, they divide it in two. You get paid on the fifteenth and the last day of the month, either you know thirtieth or thirty first. Mm. Uh, that's all I knew, right? And then here you go, idiot. Turn you know at thirty nine year old, I decide, yeah, oh, let's do this. Get out. No clue how I'm going to do it, but I'm self employed now. Right? Well, how come you ended up joining up in the first place? Um, but if we go back to what we were talking earlier. Um, Grew up, uh, you know, not to talk about it again, but eh, poor Hells Angels, you know, uh, and then moved out to, to a better place, middle class kind of. But you got to understand that during my upbringing, 
young age, right? Like uh, the, the ages I was talking about, six, seven, you, school and bullies and, and non-bullies, right? That's a, that's how you grew up the same way. And I, I, I just <clears throat> always took the side of, of the oppressed. Um, and I was tall, you know, I was tall for my, like I always been taller than everyone, but like skinny, you know, and then that, no no martial art classes i was just a street boy so at least i knew how to defend myself because we'd get in fights and scraps and, and i always I, I got my ass handed to me many times because bullies usually get they're naturally stronger and whatever that's why they're bullies right most of the time and, and i was always standing it's it just it wasn't me right everybody probably all in your podcast most soldiers like oh, i knew at a young age it's the same for me i i, I was always Hey, f bullies, let's fucking go. And I would get my ass handed off to me. Like I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't fucking Jason Bourne or nothing, man. But but I was standing up to bullies, and I carry that through. Uh, at seventeen, I joined because you gotta understand, I was still connected. Even though I moved out, my circle of friends, it wasn't that far, right? That I, I was still with my childhood friends or my childhood friends that I had in that poor community. And, and a lot of them ended up joining the dark side, you know, jo jo and, and I could see that uh, 16, 17, they're, they're doing, you know, stealing stereos and blah, 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 and selling a bit of drugs. And, and then I decided, I, I took a decision, like, I don't want to end up like that. I, I, maybe I moved out of it just enough to see the outside world and understand that, oh, okay, this is not normal. Right, but then, and, and if you want a specific reason why I joined the military, my brother's ten years older than me, and um, he's a firefighter. He's now, a, you know, he's got his own fire hall in, in Canada Fire Brigade. You guys call it. He's a captain. He's well, well established uh, fireman. But, but when he, he was just joining, he was doing his courses and stuff. Um, I'm like, okay, this is taken, like, because I. A brother doesn't always want to copy his older brother, right? So, so it was like, because I was interested in, in, in being a, in the fire brigade, but I'm like, okay, he, he did this. That kind of similar to what I feel. I want to save people and help and whatever. So, so then I'm like, okay, what else? Oh, a soldier. And then remember I saw Saving Private Ryan and, and, and I was like, okay, I could do this. So, so that's how I took the decision is, you know, and I started investigating, and, and you know, at a young age, at 15, and, oh, that's cool. And then I found out about, back then we had the Airborne Regiment, so, so there was, like, recruiting <coughs> videos on, uh, you know, the start of internet, but online there was recruiting videos of, the, of the, our Paris. I was like, oh, that's cool, you know. And, and then I walked in, um, yeah, early 17-year-old, took, took the train to, to downtown Montreal, found a recruiting office. And walked in full of zits, skinny. And I talked to a recruiter. I'm like, oh, I want to be in the army, and I want to be a para, you know. And he immediately is like, oh, this is for you, infantry, right? Because you join infantry and then you go to Paris. So like, yeah, 17 year old, no high school diploma yet. Yeah, you should look at this. What year was this? 2099. I started the process, and 2000 I was enrolled. Oh, same year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, 2000, I was enrolled. Again, 17-year-old here, it's probably the same. You can join at 17, so before you're 18, but your parents need to sign, right? You can, you can sign up at 15. Oh, no. You, can, you can sign up at really? 15. I don't think you're allowed to start. No, you can sign up 90 days before your 16th birthday, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't apply an ops until you're 18. Okay. But you can go to so Army Foundation College. So you need consent and then... Yeah. Oh, that, wow. That, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 16. So how does that work? You, you go to... You go to... You, go, go, you go, I think it's the same now. You go to Army Foundation College. Okay. So it's like for young joiners, basically. Ah, I see. We don't have that. So so you, uh, you're fully... You're, you're just like an adult. So if your parents sign at 17, you, you just get in the machine like a 18-year-old. Um, so I was in our, our initial course in Saint-Jean. For, for French speaking guys. Saint Jean de Le Richelieu is the first course you do. You know, like all arms that your Navy, Air Force, Army, they go 
do the basic course in Saint Jean. So I was there <laughs> in 2000 at 17 year old, and, and the rest of history. I, I loved it. I thought it wasn't enough. You know, I watched uh, Saving Private Ryan, and then all of them. Uh, Full Metal Jacket. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. After he told me, "Hey, this is for you." You know, French Canadian Infantry. He gives. I let. I left home with the brochure, and I was. I read it about 30 times. I'm like, "Oh, that's so cool." And then um, I watched Full Metal Jacket. After that, you remember the beginning of Full Metal Jacket, right? Like Marine Corps, mm -hmm. it's hardcore in there. You know, their boot camp. So what a film! What a <sighs> film! Yeah. What a film! Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, that the drill instructor now was, was an actual drill instructor yeah, yeah. from and the U.S. military. Yeah, that shot show in Vegas. No way! No, he's famous, the drill instructor right? from yeah, Gunnery Char uh, Gunnery Sergeant. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, he's famous. Yeah, yeah he's at, I don't know about now, but back in two thousand, he did loads of films. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's, he an he's a famous figure in the states, right? Yeah, um, yeah, I got an autograph from him and stuff. Yeah, he's a famous character, but uh, yeah, it was a fill in that they got, so I thought it would be the same. <laughs> it's not the same, right? Well, what's, and what's, I was like, oh, disappointed. I'm like, oh, that's not enough. I want to, you know. What? Training? Yeah, like the normal boot camp in Canada it doesn't look at all like Marine Corps back in the, the 70s. What you know? was? What did it look like? Yeah, but it's probably even similar to here. Is is it's the initial course that all arms go into to, yeah. to learn the drill and all the dress and some discipline. And uh, it was just... They need to, even though it's, we're dinosaur, you and I, right? In the late 90s, 2000, they were, they were all, I know now that it was almost, it's a, the machine was already in the process of inclusivity and less hard, you know? So, oh, it wasn't like that for me. No, I mean, you didn't like that, man. Look, no, maybe, maybe because it was I was fucking horrendous. Maybe because I was expecting <laughs> Full Metal Jack. No, yeah, maybe. There's people that were crying. Don't get me wrong. Like, my my class we, we were actually lucky because because anyone that joined the military goes through it navy and air force and army usually it's all mixed you, you get a class of 30 and then you go through the eight weeks process or eight nine weeks process but because there was so many application for infantry that they ended up putting all we were a rare course of of 30 candidates <coughs> that were all gonna go infantry right so they they actually decided to push it a bit more to get us ready for infantry school mm. so i did get it harder than probably the other platoons that were all mixed right but but even there i i didn't find it hard it, it, it's an eye-opener for a, a young teenager to have to do your bed perfectly every day and they fucking smashed everything around but it was not at all what i expected from all the movies right that's a good thing yeah yeah uh one instructor that we had um he was the only instructor because it's all mixed right i remember my detachment commander during the entire course was air defense and you know he's an alcoholic i could tell because i'm street smart and he had big red nose and he smelled like booze in the morning and he, he wasn't scary looking and then that other detachment commander and i if he, you'll never hear this, but Ro Robert Ains was his name, and and he was a great, um, he was a great uh, mentor at first because he was in that airborne regiment I was talking about. Uh, it, it was, it, it was uh, disbanded by then, but he served in it, and uh, immediately I'm like, I want to be like that guy. He's probably on the roids, but like huge mountain guy, fucking muscles, and he. He, he's the one that would put the boot to us. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the other instructors, were, one was Navy, a little fat, short. You know, I'm like, you don't look like in the movies, you know? <laughs> it, it, it's an eye opener that, it's an eye opener for a young kid to see that. Because I've never been around soldiers before them. So I'm like, there's fat people in the military. Hmm. Interesting. I yeah, didn't know that. As a kid, right? You're like, so naive you yeah. think about how you know when you make the decision to join up some of that yeah. i remember when i we were on our first we were on our first exercise in the inverted commerce it was like basically our first night like in the field yeah. and i distinctly remember asking the section commander the the instructor if we were going to be having a fire because I, I got brought on a farm go camping mm -hmm. have a fire i like i was so because i i hadn't sort of 
it wasn't something I always wanted to do mm-hmm. military. It just mm-hmm. it only popped into my head in the last mm-hmm. sort of year, year yeah, in, the, in the year or two before I, mm-hmm. before I actually joined. Excuse me, before I actually joined because of mainly because of lack of other other mm-hmm. options and some other like personal things I knew oh, I know I was a fucking weed I wasn't happy with myself um, yeah are we gonna have a fire and he just looked at me didn't even answer thinking what the fuck are you on about a fire yeah uh, very tactical I want to say something too because it connects to what you said that oh I got the boot at my boot camp and I, I, I did but not that much is f- from my experience now you know I, I think I'm a pretty experienced warrior British forces or the British warrior culture you guys have a strong it's tough you know <clears throat> you guys have a uh, I, I did get to work with you guys a little bit I did the Cambrian patrol in 2000 whatever you, you, you guys are hard as fuck that's what I'm saying I'm not saying that Canadians we have a great warrior history right World War One along you guys World War Two, Afghanistan Korea we know how to fight but our warrior culture within our military is not where you guys are. And, and I know that. Oh, what's the difference? What do you mean? Like I, an example I just gave you, it, it, it's a, there's a lot of fat. We have a, not as much as the Americans, but it's more... Uh, oh, mate, we have unfit and overweight people. You not not as right much places. as Canada, my friend. I, I tell you, I live here now. I'll, try, I'll point you to some units. <laughs> there's certain units. <laughs> there's certain units, but I, I, I tell you, man, I've, I've, I've watched it. Have a look because, on TV for the King's Coronation. Uh, yeah, you'll see him. No, just just a harder culture. I, I just told you the when we were getting a coffee before this, the, the two Kansas guys that are here for Coronation this oh, yeah. weekend, and they're doing drill from 4.30 yeah. in the morning. SF operators that we don't do drill ever. And they're drilling for the last 10 days, 5.30 in the morning to, to 7 p.m. at night. And there's some, I don't know what units is leading it, but some sergeant major is just hard as fuck See, at we them. wouldn't send SF yeah. on the drill. It's Commonwealth, right? There's, I, I guess he was telling me, this guy, he's, there's a bit of everything. They, they, and they pick, I don't yeah. know what they did wrong, like I told you, I don't know what they did wrong to, to get on that <laughs> detail, but there's there's two guys here that, that will be on uh, the, part of the parade or whatever uh, tomorrow. Yeah. And, and they're saying, it just connects with what I'm saying is, you guys are hard, and, and I work alongside all retired uh, British guys now, and the stories we share, and it, it, it's just harder, you know? Yeah. Playing around and... Yeah, I think that's just down to the, the, the length of history we have with it. I yeah. think that's it, you of know, course, it's like, yeah. uh, it just... <laughs> yeah, but I mean, on the tablet drill, mate, like, I, you will... You will we, 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 most units in the British military are at most average at drill, right? Mm-hmm. At most, at best, average at drill. There's only a couple oh, which really? are like ninja yeah, at it. I'm There's only that. a couple which are ninja at it. And they're, and, and they're mainly the, guar- the guards units mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, because they're... they're just, again, That's the one a, I see in London and stuff. Here. Yeah, there's a few yeah. different regiments yeah. associated through that. Um, but they're yeah, many guards units, uh, and they are injured it. And again, that's down to like history, history, history of it. It's down to a bunch of different factors. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, one second. Oh. Right, uh, the uh, we're back. We had some, we had some unexpected, unexpected visitors, but we are back. Uh, right, what were we talking about? What were we talking about? Warrior culture. Yeah, we were talking. Oh, drill. Drill. Yes, there's only a couple of units. Only a couple of units who like all. I say a couple. There's a few who are like ninja at it, and that's. But that's because they do the ceremonial stuff mm-hmm. at the at various locations, mainly in London. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they'll do it for two, like two years, mate. They'd be like for, so for two years. Their role is ceremonial duties. Here, so they we're in London. Two now. year posting. Today. Two years, man. But uh, I don't know. Some, French, French, some people enjoy it. Yeah. Some people don't. There's something called in Quebec City, so the capital of, of the province of Quebec, uh, where all the French infantry is based on, on the Quebec base. Uh, there's three battalions there. And the second battalion, uh, maybe if there's uh, military guys who would understand Vain Dude, that's the nickname for the Royal 22nd Regiment. That's the French. Canadian uh, infantry regiments, <coughs> and their nicknames Vain Dues, because Vain Dur 
is the number 22nd and and anglos they, they can't pronounce vendu so they say vendus so that became her, her nickname i don't know when it started but if you say if you refer to vendus in canada <coughs> i don't know you're speaking about uh, french uh, canadian infantry whatever but the second royal 22nd is um responsible there's a citadel there back from when france and england were fighting for the country uh the the last battle you know that when you guys kicked the french's ass it was the last battle was was in around that citadel so so it's an old fortress basically from the 1600s and, and there's there's a lot of ceremonial um stuff taking uh. place in the summer mostly yeah, there and um the, the the second battalion is responsible to man this and, and it's a two-year uh posting that or uh, yeah I, I believe so i've never been in the the second battalion doing it but uh it's a two-year i think that that, that their dress uh, plus our lineage right it's the same uh, ceremonial dress that the red uniform tunic with, with the how do you call the big bob the, uh, the uh, baskin yeah the baskin so the ba baskin yeah so it's the same out there is it with her yeah oh. because of her commonwealth lineage it's a royal my my infantry battalion was it's a royal from Mm. Royal 22nd Regiment. Question. Is there much of a cultural divide between French Canadians and Anglo Canadians? Uh, there is. It, it tapered down. And, and let's take my grandfather, for example. So, so in the, in the, before World War II, you know, uh, early 1900s. The French Canadian, that, you know, we, we, we have our own province. How could I relate it here? Irish, we were the poor class of Canada as a whole, right? You guys, the French Canadians. Right? Yeah, you guys won the war, right? Back in 1600s, you guys won. France didn't. French, France didn't. So, so we became kind of like the the poor community of Canada as a whole. The not anymore, but the prosecuted and and all the high paying jobs. I'm talking about Quebec province. It's like saying England, right? Like uh, the Quebec province back when my grandfather w was was a young working man. <coughs> these guys couldn't get the good jobs. All corporate level of it was English, right? And and French Canadian. I, I, I've learned in school to speak somewhat, you know, English. I still can't speak it properly, but it was a thing. But back then, back so not long ago, right? Like, not even a hundred years ago, that French people were seen as lower class Canadian, um, and and blue collar. All the now I'm speaking about Montreal. You know, blue collar jobs were French Canadian because it's a French, it's a French province really. Blue collar and all the management level would be English. You know, if you look at the island of of montreal the west end is predominantly english and, and it's kind of this mount royal there's a small little mound on the island and it's all where the rich houses are like like saying chelsea kensington like richer and where i'm from the east side of the city where, where all the french canadian lived is the rundown neighborhoods and and not anymore but back not too long ago when my, my, my grandfather all the blue collar lived at the bottom of the mound and all the rich guys live on the mound and they would own the companies and be you know corporate level and and my my granddad was a blue collar so so back then i'm saying there was a big divide not not anymore you know <coughs> there's something called the separatists right I, I, you're probably aware there was many referendum Quebec wanted to separate from Canada and be a country, which is fucking so ridiculous to me. But back then, you need to understand that revolution and like, hey, let's take back our, our country or whatever. Well, isn't Ottawa talking about it now? Ottawa? Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah, they They're talking about it. Aren't they separating? Separ there is no, conversation there, about there, it. There was a referendum when I was a, a child. So mm -hmm. there was one, I don't remember the year, but probably early 90s. Uh, we could Google it after. There was a, a referendum in my lifetime. Quebec trying to be a country. That's so fucking stupid. 
we, we wouldn't be able to to be a, a country the size of you know Quebec is what if you take the UK I think it fits twice in it you know so, so it's a big problem it's Canada's twice big. the size of the UK I, I, look don't one and a half at least we'll, we'll, we'll compare it after but I uh, want an answer for you now so I can text you later and say you're talking shit the, this this uh, <laughs> pro- I, I, at least it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. You have a goal. At least the same size, for sure. <laughs> you know how big Canada is, right? So it's all relative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Look, yeah. we can do it right now. Just, just go on Google Earth or I whatever. Know, zoom out. No. Look at. I know, I've got no internet. The UK. Yeah, no. it, doesn't right. it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter. At least the same size. Okay, and um, uh, the entire UK. Yeah, it's bigger. Right? Quebec is bigger than the UK. Anyway, whatever. There's a lot that's not populated. <laughs> what I'm saying is that it'd be ridiculous. The trade agreements now that we need to do. Plus, with our military background, Canada would not let that happen because we're the we make the most electricity with water, hydroelectricity. We feed a lot of Canada with electricity. So, so obviously, Canada would be like revolution or whatever. They'll just take us over right there's no we, we could sustain ourselves as a country so i find it ridiculous that these guys are like we're separatists we'll become our own country and whatever no divide so to answer the question less divide especially in montreal is bilingual and it's multicultural now quebec city <coughs> Quebec City, that's about a you know three hour drive from Montreal. That that's that's where there's still a reminiscence of Vive le Quebec Lib. You know, like they, you know, probably like a IRA. You know, it's still around, but not as much as seventies. Same thing in Quebec City. It's called the separatist movement. They're still around. Good example. I'm born in Montreal, right? I'm French Canadian. I speak, I speak Quebecois. It's, a, it's our version of French. Born in Montreal. Joined the French Canadian Infantry, which is based in Quebec City. So I'm a Montreal boy going to Quebec City to join my military, the Canadian military. And I, I refer myself as a French Canadian. They don't. They refer themselves as Quebecois. There's a big difference. They call themselves Quebecois as opposed to French Canadian. French Canadian. And we'd get in fist fight. They don't like French Canadian from Montreal. And we don't we don't really like Is French. that because they are separatists and they yes. see Montreal yeah. as and not? Montreal right. were my multi uh, bilingual. We were Canadians. Quebec City is is the the birthplace or like the, the their homeland, you know, it's different, different culture, man. If, if you look at Quebec province, there's two culture, Montrealers and Quebec. Yeah, this is like, um, uh, this is like Republicans and Unionists, Northern yeah. Ireland. Everyone's Northern Irish, yeah. but you got some who want to be, we're fucking, we're part of Ireland. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're part of Ireland, see who we are. And you got others who are, no, 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 we're part of the UK. Yeah. They're all Northern Irish. Yeah, exactly. So, so I spent my early military career <laughs> being based in Quebec City, but from Montreal, I hated the nightlife and the social life there so much because I was kind of shunned oh, from Montreal. You know, I'm a young 17 year old. I want to get laid as much as possible. It was almost impossible there. I would drive every weekend, you know, you get your weekend pass and see you Monday. I would drive the three hours to Montreal to be with my people and, and, and do my nightlife there. Mm. Because as soon as a, a girl would find out you're from Montreal, not all of them, but most of them, Oh, Montreal, or, oh, oh, you know, it, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's probably, look, I'm a dinosaur, like I said, but it's probably like that still. Yeah. Guys get their leave pass for the weekend. If they're from Montreal, they'll go back to what they know. Same province, same language, but I never introduced myself in my life as a Quebecois, I'm French Canadian. So uh, Quebecois, are they quite right leaning? They're quite, are they quite right right leaning like conservative uh, look I've, I've, I've never been political that much um no i i would say they're pretty liberal there uh. um and again i'm not mm. a politically inclined guy like i the job i was doing i understood that no politician says the truth and uh, <clears throat> you know, 
I, I, I'm conservative. I vote conservative. But uh, no, I don't, uh, Quebec as a... Look, the answer from me to you, Quebec is a pretty liberal. The liberals love to win in Quebec during the elections. And, and it's a big province in, in, times of pop, uh, in terms of population and stuff. So Quebec, you know, you know how politics work. They need to spend a lot of time in Quebec because mm. Quebec has a lot of votes and it's an important province to, to win. Mm. Yeah, Most provinces hate Quebec um, and I understand them because of uh, it's called the equality payment. Look, let's not get into that, but other provinces of Canada need the governments need to pay in every year or whenever it happens. Oh, I heard about this last yeah, year. And it's crazy. I think it was actually the same thing I was listening to, a podcast I listened to, and it was a, a, a politician from Ottawa. Is that same conversation? Mm -hmm. Right, explain the payment thing at Quebec. And, and again, I never really paid interest to it too much because I'm Canadian. But um, I think it, it part as, and I could be somewhat wrong a part has to do with when you guys won the country and gave us a little piece of land is retribution or whatever as being french canadians yeah, yeah. like pay, so so you know i know for a fact the province of alberta which is our one of our biggest money maker with the oil they they're not a super rich province though because they have to they're really wealthy you know they export oil especially to the u.s a lot they're rich but not that rich because they have to give a lot of money to Quebec. So I'll burden. Is Quebec where the government is based? No, in Ottawa and Ontario. Or capital, the country is Ottawa and Ontario. I might be thinking of Alberta, not Ottawa. But go on here. Alberta is west. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and oil rich. Yeah. But they pay a lot of money. They're one of the provinces that pays the most into Quebec. They, they almost all do pay into Quebec. And then Why shows, Quebec and not Alberta? And then they pay in Ontario. Uh, just, Hang on, what's the capital? My geography in Canada uh, is Ottawa. No, no, Ottawa, right. Yeah. So why why into Quebec and not into Ontario? They, they also pay a lot in Ontario. So the, the two provinces that oh Canada gosh. kind of dislike the most is Ontario, where the capital is, yeah. and Quebec. Right, so why uh, do they have to pay Quebec? Retribution, I believe, at some point, but also... Oh, like reparation? Remember, uh, reparation. Oh my God. Oh, did I say retribution? Sorry. Reparation, yeah. Kind of. I think that's how it somewhat started. But, yeah. but there's also that we... We export a lot of electricity and then now they need to pay because whatever. And, and again, look, you can tell I'm not a professional or, you know, professor of, of geopolitics in Canada. And, and, and I, on purpose, when I joined, especially when I became a man, you know, I just fuck that. I'm going to concentrate on, on going through my career and, and surviving it and being the best soldiers I can be. So I kind of, that was noise to me. But that's what I understand of it. Uh, but, but there's a lot of Canadians, especially more dislocated, right? Such a big country. If you're far west, you think we're the devil, like the Quebecers, which, which I make sure every time I meet, because I do a bit of consulting in Canada at the moment and stuff with law enforcement and, and uh, other people. And when I speak, I do some leadership training and you know, use my experience in leadership to try to bring it to the corporate world. world. Every time I sit in, in a in a room with with people that are from out west, I make sure I start like that. I'm like, hey, I, I always say I sound retarded because my my accent. I'm like, I might sound retarded, fucking with a potato in my mouth, but I'm a French Canadian. I defended her values. You know, I point at them like I defended her values, and I started right off the bat like that. But immediately they're like, oh, because they know that a Quebecer, French Canadian, but they they think a Quebecer is coming. And, talking to them so i make sure i set the mood mm. like I, I i've served my country for for two decades i'm a french canadian and they're all like oh okay and then, then it's all good yeah yeah, yeah. Right? your accent's fine right nothing wrong with it nah, potato <laughs> <man>. I, and, <laughs> and another thing is i can't speak french correctly anymore like quebecois like i, I speak to my brother you know my my father they're like oh I look, I, I'm searching for my words and I, I, I put an English word in there. So, so basically, if you, if you take it to the basic, I do not speak one language properly. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak English and I can't speak French. Yeah. 
it's funny. I go to Paris, you know, it's a short train ride from here. They can't understand me in French. Okay. Plus, they have a hard time with Quebecois, but yeah, so I don't speak any uh, language fully. It's funny. Yeah, but that's another thing the relationship between Quebecois and French friends. They see us as like bastard cousins. It's funny to me. It's funny because don't give a oh, shit. Oh right. Yeah, it's kind. You know, when when <laughs> colonization of Canada happened, just like you, we talked about that the other day. You guys sent your conscript to Australia, right? <laughs> Friends did that. They send their conscript to to Canada. So my bloodline is is prisons and, and women is prostitutes, and it's it's funny historical fact. That, that I, I, I read a lot into. When, when the king of France said, okay, yeah, let's get some furs and, and whatever wood from, from Canada. They, they, uh, the army didn't want to go, the, you know, the officers. You guys sent troops and officers and the proper people. They, they, were like, uh, they did like you guys did in Australia. They just, uh, emptied the prison because it was hard, right? The wilderness and the, the natives. And, so they needed hard men. So I'm blessed by that because my, my pool gene is tough like in woodsmen, you know, like cr basic criminals and stuff, but tough, tough humans. That's why we got along with the natives uh, quite easily and, and we survive in this harsh environment. Well, the natives, they're Inuits. Up north, there's different kinds, but Indians, you know, like the ones with bow and arrow. Oh, the same in Canada as it was in North America? Yeah. Oh, because, of course, uh, it's North America, isn't because, it? Talking it's stupid North idiots. America, right? Yeah. There's, there's <laughs> Mate, I, I, you know what? Until you mentioned that, it never dawned on me. Of course, yeah. I associate Native Indians with USA. Yeah, no. Obviously it's not. America. It's North, North America. You, and then there's no, a, yes, a wow. hundred and some different tribes. Fucking and, good. Yeah, I'm an yeah, idiot sometimes. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. Look, it's far, it's far away from you. Um, yeah, so where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, so the French sees us as the... Like current French, because mm. our accent's different. They they think I bastardize their. It's, it's it's a slang, right? So I bastardize the French, the beautiful, you know, the snooty over there, right? Mm. Like the beautiful French language, best language in the world. Uh, we're destroying it with my accent. Is it? You think so the French is the best best accent in the world? French? No, fuck no. Uh, <laughs> look, I, sorry if there's French people listening, but. <laughs> I'm going to apologize right now, but I'm a guy that says the truth at all time. In, in Canada, if, and I have not, nothing against homosexuals, but, but <laughs> not zero against them. I'm just saying that in Canada, in Quebec province, if, if you're gay, somehow, I don't know why, but they, they, they adopt the French way of speaking. They speak like Whether they're French Canadian or not. No, they're French Canadian. They're Quebecois. Yeah, but they decide to, to be homosexual. They're homosexuals. Yeah, those sound French from they Paris. Don't, they don't always decide. I think they're born like that. No, oh, they have the lisp the, 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 from the French. They adopt it like that. Yeah, they adopt they, they, the accent. They, they, like that. Yes, in the same way that over here you get some some people who are gay, they will be camp. Yeah, adopt that. Interesting. You know, yeah. you can yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I don't know why, but you yeah. can tell an English homosexual because his voice is more feminine and, and different. I, in some cases, not all cases. Uh, not all cases. Some cases. Look, the I, obvious I'm not trying to sound. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, my story is. You that, were painting a broad brush than across yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of gay a, people. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not apologizing <laughs> for that. It's, just, it's like saying all lesbians are butch. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, exactly. I don't mean butch like you. But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, yeah, okay. if you want to understand the little <laughs> joke I have, is that. To me, basically, all French people from France sound gay because I'm born, I'm, I'm used to that ah, accent. You see where I was ah, going is, is if I go to Paris, everybody, they're not, but everybody sounds, sounds, everyone sounds hom camp. homosexuals to me because in, in oh, Canada, interesting. yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, it is a very romantic language, isn't it? But what about, so talking about languages I think you're correct that's why maybe they, yeah. yeah 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 but what about you and you since you've been here in the UK right mm -hmm. are there any accents you've been exposed to and you think and you've thought what what the fuck look I'm, I'm in the middle of it I'm starting to to understand you know I, I work with Richie we work together well, oh, oh god yeah, Scouser uh, Scouser <laughs> I'm, I'm starting I'm, I'm, I'm at the infancy of understanding 
you guys accent of where you're coming from because at first i thought he was from scotland because he said i'm a scots what's his accent is scouse 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 when, Scou- when I'm a we scouser. first met scouser. yeah yeah he said oh, i'm a scouse you know yeah and to thought, me he was saying he was from he scotch was scotch yeah, yeah <laughs> scotch. anyway i'm starting you know my 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 wife <laughs> my wife i was a essex accent i didn't know there was a ex- essex. 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 essex essex see i can't even pronounce it properly yes essex so, so i'm starting to okay look i've been on it is we are it's i mean we it's one of the wildest places i think i mean it's one of the wildest english-speaking places on the mm-hmm. planet i can't speak for yeah. places that don't speak english because i haven't got two a fucking hours clue. Away. you drive two it's hours away there's a different less than that much less than that right yeah. i'll take you up to where my girlfriend lives in warwickshire where my, where my my main studio is mm-hmm. in warwickshire right warwick accent is really mild it's not really got any accent right lemon spa warwick it's a real mild just normal british it's a bit of a twang there you can tell if you've been around there for a while right um you go 20 minutes on the train and go west 20 minutes on the train and you're in birmingham and you might as well be on a different fucking yeah, planet that's crazy in birmingham <laughs> that's how they speak yeah. it, they are wild and it's like and you're thick brummy brummy you call it brummy accent mm-hmm. a thick brummy accent you don't know where you are on the planet mate i'm telling you and it's and trying to just it, 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 it's that it's it, as extreme as fine. going to scotland and speaking to a because it's one thing speaking to like a scottish person in london mm-hmm. it's one thing speaking to a scouser like richie in london mm-hmm. you go with richie to scouse land you go with richie to liverpool and see if you can keep a track of the conversation yeah you won't have a fucking clue yeah. no one does yeah. apart from yeah. scousers yeah. or people who live in liverpool with scousers <laughs> wild I've known wild richie almost a year now and we were great together but we were laughing about not long ago we we're laughing about it that now we understand each other perfectly almost you know rarely am i gonna have to say pardon me what did you say but at first this guy the lips were moving <laughs> And we're trying to build something together. The lips are moving. I'm like, I have no clue what he just said. I'm going <laughs> to nod. I'm going to nod. Mm. But, but now we're good because my brain, you know, gets used to it. But uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it's good. And then, like you said, you go to places which are, which are bilingual. Mm-hmm. So you go to, like, South, I can think of South Africa as an example. You go to South Africa and they'll be talking. South Africa will be talking yeah. English mm-hmm. and then chucking in Afrikaans words. Yeah. Yeah. What? What did you just yeah, yeah, what? Exactly. what did same you thing, say? Same thing what? in Montreal. Yeah, Montreal is a same, real yeah. mix. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll say we Wild. adopted a lot of English Wild. words and it's it's fluent now. Yeah, you know? Wild. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, quality. The world is a, the world is a very very fascinating place. I love it. I think if I could if I could live for five hundred years, I think that's the time you'd need to be able to go around every single country or at all and every single significant different part of a country in the world and experience it. Just yeah. spend like a week yeah, in each yeah, place, yeah. a week. We're li- we're lucky we're well travelled, right? The stuff you saw, the stuff I saw. Yeah, there's something Just to be said for being a vampire. Quickly, because I feel I need to share this. The, 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 quickly, let's go back to the, the divide. Remember, I, I said there. 10 minutes left if that go uh, what fixed it it's a funny historical fact that what fixed that divide is, is around 1920 something is hockey ice hockey oh really the greatest player that ever played with Maurice Shaw was French Canadian he was blue collar <coughs> from from that east part of Montreal and he got um, to play with Montreal Canadians and and back then even in hockey world there was a divide. The French Canadian players were the best, but they were treated and paid like shit. Hockey player didn't make much money back then, but even then, French Canadian players were the best, were paid like shit, were treated like shit. So you could have a French Canadian player and a Canadian player on yeah. the same team. Yeah. The French Canadian would get paid less. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, there's a great movie. I don't know if they translated what? it in English, but I could send it to you. It will explain the entire thing. Maurice Richard was the first, he was the best player. He was destroying everybody in the league. There was about seven teams back then. He was destroying everybody. And he was working harder than any other player because English players and, and the coach and the team owner would not get him protected on the ice. You know, ice hockey is mm. really brutal, right? Mm-hmm. It's hits. <clears throat> Back then, it was even worse. They'd fucking chop each other with the sticks and stuff. He wasn't getting protected. But he was the be- He was the one that was making Montreal win Stanley Cup after Stanley Cup. 
At some point, the blue collar side, the French Canadian Montreal, did a big fucking riot, you know, to defend their, their star player. And the, the movie would explain it better, but they stood by him and there was a big fucking uproar that the city was on fire. Like the crazy shit. Yeah, yeah like a full, full on riot. It's cost. Quebec. Quebec, in Montreal, the island of Montreal. And he was such a hero and a, and a, a face for the French Canadian that he went in the news and the snap of his finger, he stopped the, 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 the week long burning buildings, burning cop cars, you know? The Englishman was the boss of everything. He stopped it. And that was the seed and the start of the English, the, the Canadian English world starting to listen to, to the French needs, that the Quebecois needs. And, and it started with hockey, with this guy going on the news and stopping this crazy riot that, that not the riot that lasts a few hours, like they were, it was lost control in the French Canadian population. And he, he, he literally like, my grandfather remembers. He stopped it. He's like, hey, peace, stop. Oh, so we're we talking burn. what, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s? Yeah, 19, 20 something. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Jesus. Yeah. What's the film called? It's called Maurice Richard, but I'm not sure if they. I owe you to, to send you a, yeah, a send link to an English version. Yeah. I, I believe they might be an English version. Yeah, send it Maybe over. subtitles. Oh, I don't mind. I don't mind subtitles. It's a great. It's a great movie, oh, and it, it, it will explain everything we talked about. It will explain. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I never knew about that. Yeah, I never yeah. knew about. Hey, that. Even in the, in the we call it an arena in the stadium. Uh, it, it was just like uh, back down south in the States, French Canadian weren't allowed to mingle with English Canadians. So in the stadium, there'd be fences. <coughs> you're on the Quebecois side or you're on the, the English Canadian side. Mm. On the bus, they're just like racism in the States. Mm. On the bus, the French Canadians sit at the back. Like it was the same in my grandfather era. He, uh, ice hockey fixed it. Maurice Richard fixed it. Interesting. With, with his with his drive and, and and he was the best player in the league, getting beaten like with sticks every night. You know, crazy. Yeah, crazy. The world was not a nice place. Mm -hmm. It was not a not, a not a nice place. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, right. What have we not covered? Is there anything you want to anything you want to plug or anything before we before we call us? Yeah, what, six minutes left? I well, don't six, I, I, well, we don't I, I, have to I, use the six. Yeah, I, I, I don't need to plug anything. Um, thank you for having me, my first, you know. Um, no, I'm, it's I'm been a pleasure, really mate. Reluctant to do any, I'm happy we didn't touch on military career too much, maybe another time. I'm we'll do it start. again, mate. I mean, yeah. it's a shame we haven't got longer today. Well, I've got, I've got time pressures today, but um, we'll do it again and um, come up to the, come up to the studio. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, that, my yeah. studio, like big, big shout to bags. A for, a brand, big shout to bags for letting us use the- uh, A brand I stand behind that I should have said earlier, instead of you go boss, is Ducati. And we're, we're both uh, Ducati. Ducati fans. Yeah. So I'll ride the Ducati up and then, uh, Business. And I've just introduced you to Sunita's Guild. Yeah. T-shirt. Yeah. Mate, yeah. check them out. Check I them will. Out. Promise you. Um, but yeah, come up to the studio up there and we'll maybe, I don't know, we'll try and tie you in the event or whatever up there. In in June, mid-June, is a, a, a military festival on up there. Rugby for Heroes Festival, mm -hmm. which oh, is nice. going to be a big event. I'm, I'm starting to get into rugby. What, playing? Like, no, just watching it. Oh, mate, come it. up. Yeah, yeah. Richie, Richie, R Richie is Richie's big. played at the, yeah, at the festival. He's the one that's, you know, he brought me to a game. I was yeah, England up. against Italy. I really liked it. Oh, yeah. Well, come up for that weekend. Yeah, okay. Bring Richie up. He's been there before. He knows yeah, where cool. it is. Cool. And the studio's there. Perfect. We'll do it. Mate, it's been a pleasure. Definitely do it again. Definitely do it again. Yeah, I did enjoy it. You're, you're an easy, uh, easy one to work with. Uh, I, well, I'm not a, I'm introvert, so I, I don't like speaking about myself. Or, uh, and then you you are talking shit. I no am. way. It's true. <laughs> that's See? rubbish. That's a persona. That's, that's, that's a that's Really? A I, I promise I you on, on, on our Lord. Uh, you talk the hind legs of a donkey when we've met before. Because I liked you. How did I introduce myself? Sebastian? Or Seb Butch? I, can't, I think it was Sebastian. Uh, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Fucking liar. <laughs> I think you assigned a decent, a, a good tag to me only because I was associated with bags. 
I think that's it. You know, but, hey, but you, you said, hey, you're going to meet this guy. He's a great guy, you know. I didn't have a clue about your I get, podcast. I, 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 I'll, I'll let you do a little secret. I, th- I thought, because my memory's terrible, I thought it was Dutch. I had you my phone as Dutch. And I was like, Dutch. You know, I was doing mental somersaults. Like, Dutch or Butch? Like, Dutch or Butch? So also, we met at the bike shed, and the owner of the bike shed, the owners are Dutch and Vicky. So I was like, is it Dutch or Butch? Dutch or Butch? Yeah. And, I was, and I was like no one calls himself Butch. It must be Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to say the bags, like, Dutch or Butch? She says Butch. Oh, it's Butch. <laughs> okay, go Yeah, it's really common in Canada, but, it, but yeah, here. Uh, yeah, mate, been a pleasure. Cool. And good luck. Good luck with the business, mate. Thank you, buddy.